Hi, there was a big announcement from MakerBot today about the new Replicator 2 printer. Caught me by a bit of a surprise and it's rather interesting in the direction that they're taking with this thing. And some people have asked, what's my opinion of it? Well, <laughs> let's get to it. Now here's a photo of the new Replicator 2 they've announced and check it out. Doesn't it look sexy? It still looks like a MakerBot. It's got that MakerBot look, that MakerBot replicator look. They haven't changed that too much, but clearly what they've done is they've finally ditched the laser cut wood for this thing, and they've gone with what looks like a very nice matte black uh, powder coated steel. Very professional. And they've done that, as we'll get into, to make this a faster and more precise unit because the wood. Uh, the wood on the replicator like this really, you know, it wasn't that rigid and it did limit its performance somewhat. So they've gone the direction of making a better, faster, more accurate 3D printer. Brilliant. And there's a few other changes too. They've gone from a 300 cubic inch printable volume space in the Replicator 1 to now 400 cubic inch and the build platform is physically bigger so you can make bigger larger objects but that's always been an issue with this Replicator and just at the recent electronics uh, show here in Sydney I had this on my stand it was drawing in hundreds and hundreds of people they were flocking to see this thing in action and everyone was asking well you know how easy to how easy and repeatable is it and i had quite a few failures i was printing my little yoda heads here and they were failing it wasn't sticking to the heated bed and all sorts of issues printing with the abs plastic but what they've done with the replicator 2 is it's now pla essentially pla only they've basically i think essentially ditched support for the abs plastic what they've done there is they've obviously sat around and went right they've sat in the meeting and gone right we need a better makerbot what is the problem with this thing the problem is that it's just fussy to use it's really you know and that's what i was telling people they're very temperamental you've got to eh, 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 tweak it just right to get these things to print decent results and even at you know a, approaching two grand price point you still have those sort of issues so they decided let's completely solve that and apparently haven't used it but uh, reports are saying that the new replicator 2 completely solves that even for very large objects there's no more because there's no more heated build platform because they're not using the abs plastic anymore they're using pla which is uh, one of those you know renewable um uh, cornstarch based uh, plastics and I've used that and it does print fine so that's how they're able to get a bigger platform non-heated which means it heats up a lot faster a couple of complaints about this thing was the temperamental nature of it things not sticking especially the large objects and it takes a whole bunch of time just to heat up the stupid heated build platform on the thing it's really annoying I was sitting there on the trade show stand and Oh, waiting for the sorry gotta wait for the stupid platform to heat up you know really annoying stuff so the new replicator 2 quicker faster because all it's got to do is heat up the low thermal mass head on the thing and that's it immediately starts to print and with the metal rigid frame on the thing they can make it print faster and you know, it's, it takes away a lot of the complaints of the original replicator. And I'm assuming that they've got an improved uh, print head as well in this thing. We don't know the details of that yet, but it certainly looks a bit different to the uh, replicator here, which is a third generation MakerBot. The new replicator 2 is fourth generation MakerBot. It looks like it's a very uh, similar uh, system to the replicator in terms of the X, Y, and Z um, uh, crossbars and the stepper motors and everything else but the resolution has greatly increased it's gone from 250 microns on the replicator one to a hundred micron layers apparently easily and repeatably on the new replicator two so that's getting into the professional print category 
which is brilliant. They've certainly got a winner there. They're on the right path. But this brings up probably the most interesting aspect of this whole announcement with the Replicator 2. They've gone up, they've stepped it up a level in terms of price. Price is about 25% more expensive. $2,200 for the entry level single head uh, Replicator 2. And that's really pushing it into sort of, you know, the very well healed or semi professional category and hence the increase in the specs as well it certainly is you know pushing the boundaries and instead of targeting the consumer which is all about price point pretty much for the average consumer they've decided to go in the opposite direction to what i thought that they would do a year ago when they got the uh, 10 million dollars venture capital funding i thought they'd be decreasing the price of these things and i was hoping to get a sub thousand dollar printer they've gone in the opposite direction up market and decided we're going to hit that semi-professional market and their press release you know their press announcement talked they just continue to talk about you know architects designers engineers stuff like that they pretty much didn't talk about the consumer or the hobbyist and coming in i think january 2013 will be the new uh, Replicator 2X apparently. I don't even think they've entirely finished it or tweaked it just yet, which is hence why it's not available right now. It'll have the dual uh, print head and it will have a heated build platform so it'll also support ABS plastic as well, supposedly. You know, and that is 2700 bucks. So they've really, you know, we're approaching three grand there for their top of the line model. They've pretty much completely abandoned and didn't and made a conscious decision to do this abandon at least for now the traditional hacker maker hobbyist community with 3d printers now because they've got big venture capital firms behind them and all this venture capital funding they can't just do whatever they want these days there's you know all these corporate types pushing them in a certain direction as i said in one in my previous venture capital uh, MakerBot video, I mentioned, well, they want to turn it into a, not a, you know, a five and $10 million company, not a 50. They want to take it into, you know, the hundreds of millions of dollars category. They want that times 10 times a hundred return on their original investment. And you can't get that if you follow the race to the bottom and start churning out sub thousand dollar or five hundred dollar uh, Megabots, especially not if they're going to be made in Brooklyn in the US. It's just not going to happen. So this is probably the only direction and probably the most sensible direction for them to take. Really, uh, they just can't avoid it. They are a big business, big corporation now effectively, and they've got to go where the money is. They've got to follow that money. And it's not the race to the bottom. If they did that, they'd get killed by the Chinese counterparts now everyone's heard about the recent tangy bot fiasco how some guy tried to clone the exact replicate he tried to replicate the replicator ironically um, and get it made in china didn't get the funding and a lot of people said that's probably scared makerbot into going the opposite direction i don't think so i think this decision was made long before the tangy bot came along and uh, i don't think that scared them at all they knew it wasn't going to get uh, meet and probably wasn't going to meet its funding target early on. That was pretty clear. And even if they did, eh, these things are complex beasts mechanically. It's not just a simple uh, PCB, open source hardware PCB that you can clone or some open source software that, uh, you know, it costs zero money to steal and replicate. This is, you know, it's a complex mechanical beast. And as such, they're actually now going to offer a uh, a, a MakerBot support or care package or something that, you know, they'll come, I guess, they'll send somebody around to eh, eh, tweak your MakerBot or they'll give you phone support and all that sort of stuff. And that's classic big business value-added mentality. I, it was inevitable. In fact, the next step might be renting these things. If you don't want to buy one, hey, we'll rent you one for X hundreds per month or something like that, perhaps. Wouldn't surprise me if they followed a model like that at all. Now, there was some mention that they were doing this, they had to go into this higher level performance category for the MakerBot to, in, in order to build the technology 
to scale it down to the lower category and I, you know, I wouldn't be massively surprised if they eventually came out with a smaller, it's got to be physically smaller because the bigger you make it, the more expensive it is physically. So a smaller, lower cost, consumery type model, but I wouldn't bet the house on it because they're going to make a bucket load of money with this thing in the semi-professional market, no doubt. So, you know, they might just completely abandon that low-end market and leave it to someone else. They may have the intention to go there, but they may find, well, making all our money with the new Replicator 2 in the semi-professional market, let's stay there. And they've got some new software as well, because one of the things I complained hugely about this thing was the software and also the firmware built into it, but they've got this new MakerWare software. I haven't tried it yet, I've just downloaded it, about to try it, apparently supports the old Replicator 1, apparently like 20 times faster uh, rendering or something like that. You can put multiple objects on there at once, so you can, you know, uh, uh, print, you know, five different thing, five different parts at once in the one build, something like that. Great step forward, they had to do that because the software was the, one of the things that really let this thing down. Unfortunately, from what I've seen of the uh, screen grab of the LCD on it, the firmware interface looks pretty much identical to the Replicator 1, and that's a bit of a shame. I've hoped they tweaked it a bit. In my forum, I've got a, a list of uh, improvements that they can do just in the firmware, just really annoying things that don't make it easy to use. And apparently they've gone from the four terminal adjustment uh, four interactive adjustment points for leveling your platform to three, so that's an improvement. So software and physically, in terms of the uh, uh, PLA, PLA only, the uh, easier calibration, stuff like that, much easier. They almost guarantee now that you can print these huge objects without it peeling off and warping and doing other stuff, which I, I found was a major issue with this MakerBot. So they've definitely made a better MakerBot. And also the new Replicator 2 might be made in Brooklyn, but where are all the parts coming from? Who knows? Are they getting the powder-coated uh, steel manufactured in China somewhere? Don't know the details yet. If you do, let me know. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So they can, you know, because that's a classic business model. Yeah, made in the US, but made in the US from imported components. Same thing here in Australia. You get the made in Australia thing from both domestic and imported components. No surprise there, they're gonna look for huge margins on these things. They won't be, you know, if it costs 2,200 bucks, they're not gonna spend 1,500 bucks making the thing, I can guarantee you. There's a rumor going around, it is an unconfirmed rumor, okay? It may not be true that the new Replicator 2 is not open source anymore. They're moving away from that open source aspect of it. Now, uh, that was inevitable. Really, I mean, you know, you can't uh, build a couple of hundred million dollar organization on open source hardware. It's just not possible. And really, an article, you know, a, a thing, a machine of this complexity, there's almost little point having it completely open source hardware. Nobody's going to take all the design files and build their own sheet metal work and do everything else from scratch. It's just not going to happen. You either buy the build up one or you don't. So it's only for those, uh, you know, the, the tinkerers, the hackers, who just want to hack it, fix it themselves, make little improvements here and there, and third party aftermarket stuff and things like that. So I'd be surprised if they've abandoned the open source uh, mentality, both hardware and software, completely, because there's no incentive, no huge incentive for them to do that. I don't think that Tangibot thing scared them much at all, but I think it's just the inevitable move away from making it completely open source. So you'll probably find that some of it's open source and some of it maybe, I don't know, the new printhead or something, they might not release mechanical details or something like that, who knows? And if they do go that closed source route, hardware and or software, uh, they've pretty much excluded them from the market, that hacker, maker, open source hardware community that pretty much built the company. That's pretty much why they were successful in the first place. And uh, probably from a big corporate point of view, capital venture point of view, it's not going to matter, it's not going to worry them a rat's ass. They'll probably still be making money hand over fist and well, if they lose that reputation, uh, so be it. In fact, 
You could argue that they've probably already lost it by going up in price. They've stepped to that semi-professional level. And well, you know, what do you do? Even if it is open hardware, when it's priced at that semi-professional level, you've, you've pretty much ruled out that sort of hacker maker level of the market that you're supposedly pissing off anyway. So, ah, doesn't really matter. But just from a philosophical standpoint, they're better off trying to stick with open source hardware as long as physically possible. No pun intended. So that's about all I can say at the moment till I get actually get my hands on one, but I have no doubt it'll actually deliver out of the box the claims, uh, everything that they claim, because this one almost did. You know, it, it prints pretty well, but it's limited by that ABS plastic and the heated build platform and, and the few little tweaks and things like that. So I have no doubt the new one will live up to its performance claims in that semi-professional price and performance category. Now, whether or not in the future we're going to see a lower cost one from MakerBot, I reckon the odds are we probably won't see a lesser model from them, perhaps at least for quite some time, because they really they put this one together quite quick. It's less than a year since the Replicator 1 came out. So they've had this, you know, boiling away in this direction change, boiling away in the background for quite some time, probably at least for, you know, nine months. So you know, clearly they're going to target that higher price performance category. And if they're successful there, they may not attempt to have a lower price model and do that race to the bottom. But who knows? I don't know. I think there is still a niche there for that $1,000 printer that works well if they can scale their, uh, te their 100 micron resolution and printing technology down to, you know, it'll have to, it'll be a physically smaller unit, something like that. Or maybe they've got every intention in the world and they may actually have a group working on a lower price, you know, smaller unit or something consumer oriented, maker, hacker oriented unit. But they might find in six, nine months time when they get through the development of it or halfway through the development of it, they might see, well, the market's already flooded with a dozen reasonably good, you know, thousand dollar or sub thousand dollar printers. Eh, where can we compete? We can't, certainly not made in Brooklyn anyway. So yeah, it may just fall through, even if they're working on it. That sort of stuff happens in the industry all the time. The project ends up getting abandoned because the market factors change. So there you go, only time will tell. I was a bit surprised that they went up in the market, but ah, with a bit of thought, it seems like it's the obvious direction. So there you go, make a bot or high end of town now. Well, it is New York, right? Catch you next time.